Hello, my name is Luke, and in this video, we're going to have a look at OpenAI's newly unveiled Sora text to video generation model. Now, text to video generation has been the new thing in the world of image generation, but this new release by OpenAI really takes the uh, video generation field to a whole new level. So, we've already seen some uh, video generation models, it's actually been around for quite some time, even back in the days of GANs. And recently you've seen things like stable dif stable video diffusion, where you could generate short clips of video. But Sora, what OpenAI has released uh, not too long ago, really takes it, like I said, on a whole new level. The main thing is not only resolution, but as a lot of people are talking about, length of the actual videos it can generate. Something like stable video diffusion could maybe generate uh, three or four seconds of video, but Sora is here generating full minute long super high quality videos so in this uh, video i'm going to go through their technical report so they have given us some details on what they're doing with sora and it's quite a bit different to say what they did with dali with their diffusion model there so sora is still a diffusion model but it's actually a, a vision transformer based diffusion model uh, which is a little bit different to what they were doing with dali and uh, we'll go through what specifically they're doing, uh, go into some of the details and talk a bit about what some of these details mean. So let's go over some of their first their claims of what they can do. Basically, they say they can not only generate uh, videos of different sizes, but also uh, different lengths. So you can have variable lengths and variable sizes. So we'll have a look at you can have different aspect ratios of the videos. I can find those. This one, so you can have different aspect ratios of videos and different lengths as well. And this is all down to the fact that they're using this vision transformer as their diffusion model rather than, say, a uh, normal diffusion model like they did in DALI that was conditioned on clip embeddings or something like that. Um, it is more analogous to uh, this paper here, scalable diffusion model with transformers. So we're doing uh, the fusion model itself is actually a transformer model that patchifies the input. And uh, really, it's, it's pretty similar to this uh, paper where they uh, just take an image, convert that to a latent space, and then patchify and diffuse on those patches. Um, really, it seems once you've got it in this form where you have a vision diffusion model, uh, scaling up to video is just akin to uh, adding more patches and it's this vision transformer, and like I said, in this patch, uh, this patches that you're diffusing to with a vision transformer that allow you to have this scalability in both spatial and temporal dimensions. So let's have a look at their sort of technical uh, overview. So the first thing here is what I talked about, where we're turning the visual data into patches. So there's a sort of two-step process here. The first step they mention is that they do compress the video sequence. And one thing to note is that like a lot of, of the high quality you know, video generation models, they're generating the entire video sequence at once. There's been some work in the past where you try to sequentially generate images, but that has all sorts of problems feeding generated images back into the model. You get accumulations of errors and it sort of explodes the output. So generating the entire output at once has really been the only way that you are able to create really good uh, consistent uh, videos, but that does mean you have a huge amount, uh, you require a huge amount of compute to do so. So they compress the video sequence a little bit. I imagine they don't say how much in order to you know, reduce the uh, computational complexity. So they just say they use some visual encoder. If it's anything like this uh, diffusion transformer paper, here they just use a, a off the shelf VAE to do so. So I'm not sure if they're encoding these frames individually. I think they actually say they compress it temporally and spatially. So they, they compress the sequence all at once, not frame by frame. And then once you do that, you have your big uh, tensor of your representation for your entire video sequence. And then they patchify it. This patchification process is basically very similar to what you do with a vision transformer, where you chop your image across the color channels into little patches, and then you Put that into your transformer, but here they say they're using a um, where is it a space time patch 
what that means is I think they're just patchifying more across the actual spatial dimension. So again, I'm not sure how they're how much they're compressing their actual video sequence, but you can imagine these patches instead of being like a 2D patch by channels, it's more like a 3D cube of patches that combines both the spatial and temporal information. So again, it's very similar to what they do in the um, diffusion transformer paper. Here you can see this is their representation from the latent space of their VAE, and you're just chunking that up, chunking that uh, tensor representation up into a sequence of patches, right? And we're just doing the same thing with uh, Sora, where we've got this big tensor representation space and we're chunking it up into patches. And we have this sequence of patches. Uh, once we do that, it really seems as though they're not doing anything too different to the transformer-based diffusion. So it's a diffusion transformer where you basically have this sequence of patches using all your standard transformer, um, vision transformer architecture. And so it's diffusing in that patch space. So in that patchified latent space um, and probably using something similar for their diffusion. So the, for their decoding part of their model as this one, I think they here, they just use a linear decoder. So you have your whole sequence of your feed forward and your uh, attention layers. And then at your last block, you just have a linear layer to uh, decode into that um, noise space um, like a normal diffusion model. So it's different to how you do it with say, how say stable diffusion does it, where stable diffusion would encode the video sequence and then uh, they diffuse on that whole sequence with a unit, so a convolution based unit and generate it then and then decode. Uh, here, the vision transformer, as they talk about a lot, is really what gives you so much flexibility in the sort of uh, videos you're generating. So once you've got that uh, patches and you're basically trained it as a uh, diffusion model there, like I said, very similar, I imagine, to a normal single frame transformer based uh, diffusion model. They even mentioned here somewhere that uh, given a compressed video sequence, we can extract sequences, patches, sequences. So this scheme works for images too, seeing as images are just videos with a single frame. So I imagine, um, in fact, they, they give examples of them generating a single image as well. So a single image is just one frame of video. Scaling this up to multiple frames really is just, you know, uh, patchifying, having, having more patches in your sequence that your transformer is then denoising over. So it doesn't seem that uh, too much of a step, like I said. The, a lot of the methods of generating video are very similar to the methods of generating single images. It's just scaling them up. And I imagine, though I'm not sure they say anywhere here, that this uh, takes a lot of computational power to generate these video sequences. Again, imagine how much, or if you've got experience with image generation, you know how much compute that takes. Well, if you're trying to generate two, three, four, frames, it's probably going to take around two, three, four times as much compute, though you can, like they do here, compress uh, temporally. And so you can get rid of some redundancies by compressing temporally uh, and then diffusing on that representation space here. But if you just scroll through the results on the main page on this uh, overview, technical overview page, you can see examples of how you can uh, generate different image or video sizes. And again, that's just how you uh, encode, um, how, you, how you construct those patches and how you construct that latent space that you then patchify with some uh, you know, spatial and temporal positional encodings. So they do uh, say they can prompt it with images and videos. I'm not sure they don't really say too much about how they do that, but they do mention that it's very similar to what they do with DALI 2 and DALI 3, um, generating images based on other images. I imagine if you have this sequence of patches, then you can just put in real patches of an image as well as your randomly sampled noise patches and then diffuse with those and your diffusion model will sort of work out how to fill the frame so that's how you could do it with uh, 
imagine it's something similar to um, in painting, except now you've got sort of spatial or temporal in painting where you want to do generate the rest of the sequence from a part of the sequence. So at the moment, and the text in there, the in text conditioning as well, uh, probably very similar to what they do with the diffusion transformers, where you can take embeddings from, say, I don't know, a clip model or some other type of text embedding model, and you could just uh, concatenate that on to your sequence of patches as another patch in your sequence, and then you just don't decode that those text patches back into uh, image frames or back into that latent space. You only decode the text of uh, the image patches. Um, but in this uh, transformer-based diffusion model, there's a bunch of different ways that you can uh, condition your text or some other conditioning input. Uh, at the moment, that doesn't have sound in these videos, though I imagine that is the next step here, adding sound. Uh, there are transformer-based uh, models for sound or audio information, and if you could embed that to some embedding space and then do a very similar thing to what you do with text embeddings uh, and text conditioning, you could just add that on to your sequence of patches and then you could have a video generated based on some audio signal. So I'm pretty excited for that when it comes, but as of yet, we don't have audio in our video. So you can see here was the examples of just single image generation. Again, it's just a single frame of video. So hopefully you can see how all we're doing here is scaling up to multiple frames uh, generated at the same time by just expanding or adding more patches to our sequence. Um, yeah. So as a result, you can see how high quality and it's something that is really impressive is how high quality and how long these videos are. Um, again, it does really just come down to the amount of compute you're able to throw at this problem. Um, and I imagine this model, like I said, is huge and requires a huge amount of compute to generate these really high quality images. But it's really impressive that we are here now, that we are able to completely uh, artificially generate videos of this size, this length, and um, this quality, basically. It will be interesting to see how you are able to further condition these models with camera poses. I'm not sure if they're doing that here. Uh, in the physical world, it doesn't say too much. If they're actually using other, um, other sort of conditional inputs, but it'd be interesting to say, have camera poses camera flyovers and things like that in order to better direct the sort of uh, sort of video you actually get out. And like I said, once we have audio, then I think it'd be really, really interesting. So here we do have some weaknesses of the model um, in terms of consistency, even though we are generating the entire video sequence all at once, it does seem to have problems with consistency as well. So you can see here, um, yeah, some of the foxes just appear out of nowhere, which was something that you have problems with when you do image to image generation. So one at a time, um, you would hope that by generating the entire sequence at once, you wouldn't have these sorts of problems, but you can see we still have these sorts of problems where we have still have temporal consistency, even though we're generating it all at once, um, potentially improve that with better you know, attention or better um, mechanisms across uh, to make sure we correlate the information across patches. You can see here another basketball appears out of nowhere. And this one, I think is a lot of people's favorites. This uh, archaeologists discover a generic plastic chair in the desert and excavate it. And you can see that the, the chair is sort of morphing and warping a lot through the actual video sequence and is floating around a bit. Um, so you can see that while it does a really good job at the temporal consistency. I mean, the morphing of the chair over time is still really good. You can see that there is uh, still some issues with actually understanding and keeping things consistent. And you can see if you if you look hard enough, you can see all sorts of weird things like hands moving in weird ways, feet not really moving as feet move. But again, 
uh, we've already seen sequential improvements of image generation quality and I imagine those sorts of issues will eventually uh, improve. You can see the candle flame here uh, moves incorrectly over time. You can see it looks like at the start it's on this yellow candle here but you can see both flames are actually on this pink one as we rotate around. So uh, that's interesting details that for now we can still sort of work out what is generated and what is real. In any case, I just wanted to go over that and talk about it. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely check it out. At the moment, all we have are these examples. We don't have access to the models to any uh, to be able to generate them just yet. Um, and I imagine OpenAI is probably not going to release the model uh, um, as they don't tend to do that. But um, it'd be really interesting to see uh, what effect this has and where we go from here. Like I said, with introducing new modalities to con uh, condition the actual video generation. So that's it for this video. If you found that interesting, uh, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.